Yeah. So um, there, there's a compilation coming out next year or you know, they're collecting tracks for next year that uh, my band Edge Dope for Annie has been a part of a, a few times around called Electronic Saviors. It's it's for, for cancer charity and research and all that. And uh, this time around, they're requesting only exclusive brand new tracks. Like in the past, they prefer exclusive brand new tracks and we've always submitted exclusive tracks ourselves but some other bands will put on like oh here's a an exclusive remix or even like combi christ put out some like b-side or whatever this time they're like only new tracks and so i was talking to the singer tracy the other day uh because we're trying to work on an ep that's been in progress for a couple of years now she's like oh i'm just sort of hung up on all the old stuff like i i, I need a some fresh air musically speaking can, do you have something else I can work on that's just brand new to me that I haven't already spent years fighting with? Mm. I'm like, I can may, maybe find something, but if we're going to do this comp, which we, we, we'd we like to, because we've, we've done it a few times already, um, I might as well write something brand new anyway, because, you know, if, if we're going to provide something brand new for this comp, I might as well write brand some, something brand new. Um, so today... I, I had this idea yesterday. Today I sat down and I just recorded myself writing a piece of music from scratch, you know, blank slate, tabula rasa, just playing some piano sounds and tinkering around until I find something that sounds kind of nice. And I spent like three hours today just writing a, a rough demo uh, for a, a track from scratch and all of my fix it, fixing and futzing and tinkering around in there mm -hmm. um then i spent another couple edit hours editing that video recording down to you know like two to three hours of video down to about 40 minutes of video that i i posted on on youtube today to be like here's how some yahoo writes a track from from nothing um and so the the demo is up on soundcloud and the video is up on youtube so you can like watch me write it and then you know listen to it and be like oh yeah that's like it's it's a demo it's rough it's not great it's a draft but it's mm. something that you know 12 hours ago didn't exist and now there's something there that you can listen to um it's not great it's it's okay like it's it's a certainly a starting point and I don't think it's the vibe we want for this compilation, so I might have to just start over and, and try something, you know, set this aside for something else and start over and, and write something new from scratch. But it was an experiment that I wanted to try out of. As somebody who wants to, sort of my goal with posting things to YouTube is hey, all the shit I used to do that seems so big and mysterious, and like, how does one write a song? Or how, you know, how did so-and-so get that awesome sound, or whatever, that I would have loved when I was starting out to have people demystify for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm attempting to sort of at least put it out there that maybe I can demystify for someone else. That like, how 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 do these things, you know, you you hear some frontline assembly album and you're like wow this is like the coolest thing ever and it sounds amazing how how does anyone ever think of that and i wanted to show like well here's here's how i went from zero to 40 miles an hour and and you know maybe maybe in a little bit later video i'll take it you know the, the rest of the way i don't know but um so that was something I've I've wanted to do for a while, and so I did today. And uh, as I said, even if the song fails completely and never goes any further, like I I think what what I accomplished with the video was what I set out to do, and I did that, and that left me feeling kind of cool. That's awesome. Uh, did you get any feedback in regards to the video, or did you find a way when you were processing that two three hours of video down to 40 minutes did you find something that you can take on to the next one and build upon that 
Uh, well, so I, I've I've only posted it a few hours ago now. Um, so I I have yet to receive real feedback on either the video or the music itself. Um, I don't expect a lot. Uh, so far, my reach is is limited. Um, so in I'm not. I'm not trying to be successful with the video. It is really something I'm doing for my own. Mm. Hey, it would be cool for this to exist, so let me do it. And if no one watches it, that's fine. I, I was I was doing it more just because I thought it was neat. Um, so yeah, so f so far nothing, and I don't really expect anything, and and that's fine. Um, but as as far as while I was editing it. Uh, no, I mean, I. S s an exercise like this is more about going through your habits that you already have and doing the things you already know how to do. Like, if, if I was really trying to push my boundaries and find new ways to do new things or teach myself something new, that this wouldn't be the the avenue I take. I, I wouldn't film myself trying to do something for the first time necessarily. Um, so it was like, okay, I, I know, I know how to record some piano parts and then turn that into an arpeggiator and then take these chords I wrote and throw that into a bass line and throw a beat on top. Like it was, it was all old hat in that regard, but it was, it was interesting to see it all, sort of start to finish uh a lot of times i tend to like i'll do 30 minutes this day and then maybe 30 minutes or 45 minutes you know a few weeks later or maybe a year later or three years later and to have it you know all one batch of here's two and a half to three hours in one sitting going from nothing to uh a reasonable rough draft in in one go that was that was interesting and i don't really do that very often it is usually really spread out and you mentioned if i'm not mistaken that that compilation album is for charity right yes the electronic saviors compilation um i think this is number seven these come out on metropolis records and they are they were initiated by and and for and and oriented towards uh, cancer research and charity. So um, yeah, the, the, there have been six so far. This is a seventh coming up. Uh, we have been on th three of them so far. Uh, I, I, Antidote for any one of my, my projects. I think we were mm -hmm. on two, three, and four, but I, I could be mistaken about that. Right um, on. And so, yeah, I mean, we're, we're working towards an EP, but have been for a while. And, and, you know, the last few years have been rough for everyone. So we've certainly had our, our share of hurdles in real life things to, to, to work around. So we, we have a, an EP's worth of, of demos and, and some rough vocals and stuff ready to go. Well, you know, re ready to try and finalize and finish. Mm -hmm. And so uh tracy said hey you know let's be nice for her to to re-energize herself working with something new so i'm like well i, I can write you something new it's I'm not saying it's going to be good but it, it'll be different um so that was today's work and then tomorrow i'm starting on a, a a new remix for another band that approached me about doing a remix so today was my day to I finished one antidote for any remix for the Outer Darkness Records compilation coming spring 2024, um, and then did that track in the video, and so tomorrow will be uh, starting on a new remix. Okay. Now, you mentioned Antidote for Any, which is one of your projects. Uh, what are some yep. of the other ones? Uh, so the other big one is Ground to Dust. Um, so Antidote for Annie is me doing all music with Tracy as a singer. Ground to Dust is David and I doing 50-50 music and then getting guest vocalists from time to time. 
And those are the only like concurrent ongoing running projects. Uh, I have some other things trying to do on the side of trying to do a side project with another vocalist, trying to do some one-off tracks with uh, another, with Tristan Rudat. We, I, on the SoundCloud, there's a track we did together um, that we're in talks to, you know, try doing some more. Um, and then on, <laughs> on Ground to Dust's Chronophobia album from last year. Yeah, last year. Um, uh, Otto Kinzel from Dust Prophet did a remix and there were some talks of us doing like a side project together and that has sort of been set aside, but it's roughly on my radar somewhere. Um, as well as, you know, hey, I'd love to work with Hexen Process sometime. Hey, maybe we'll do something with Dilemma sometime. You know, like there's there's a lot there's a lot of options available. And so it is more about time management at the moment. Uh, and that's a cool place to be in. Cool place to be like, hey, I could do this, 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 or that. And have to be right. like, well, okay, what, what 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 can feasibly get done in a reasonable amount of time that works for everyone versus, um, yeah, doing this, this other thing might be awesome in theory, but as far as realistically making it work for everyone gets tricky. And that's yeah. not counting just people being like, hey, want to do a remix? I'm like, uh, do you get church? Yes. Having the, the freedom with time availability and projects and then just kind of crossing, patching wires like a synthesizer and stuff, being able to pick and choose is pretty nice. Uh, speaking of synthesizers, uh, what's your favorite gear to use? Uh, so David and I both love D16's um, Focion 2. It's a, it's a 303 emulator. Um, the two, like we, we loved Focion one and then two came out and it's even better. So that's cool. Cause we, we both love throwing three Oh threes on everything. Um, he is really into you. He's hive two synthesizer. I'm really partial to reaffects Vanguard and now Vanguard two. Uh, mm -hmm. it, what it was the sound of the early two thousands industrial, uh, in, in my mind anyway. And I came to it a bit late. And so while a lot of artists were like tired of it, by the time I found it, I'm like, this is cool. This makes me sound like those other bands I like. Um, and, and they just, you know, a decade and a half later put out a, a version two of it. So I'm, I still see that as a fun thing to go back to and, and get more out of. Um, I also, I like digging into old reactor instruments that if from my perspective, native instruments makes reactor and contact and, and, and a whole bunch of things, they started out being sort of niche, sort of experimental, very interested in creativity and in more recent years have gone sort of, sort of mainstream and, and more, more diverse, but also less weird with their offerings. And so I do like digging into those old libraries and finding the, the weird shit that like, I have no idea how I'm going to turn this into something usable, but I accept that challenge. Yeah. Sometimes just getting your hands dirty and, uh, you know, plowing through, <laughs> sometimes it's a little bit more fun than having a set of guidelines that are all structured and, you, you know, do it step one, step two, step three. You know, I, I get that too. Yeah, when when, uh, when we approached uh, writing the, the the most recent Ground to Dust album, there was a sense of let's go for weird, let's go for non traditional structures and more experimental sound generation and things like that. So we did play around with some of those older tools and instruments and, and everything and um 
there was a definite sense, at least for me, but I, I think David would agree that while we were writing that album, we were developing new new habits or new tips and tricks or you know new things like oh this this is a very weird sound let me remember how to do this and come back to it later on something else to uh to be in a in the bag of tricks to go back to that i i think over the last x many years um Because either I, you know, I was, I was always working on something. I always had the next thing planned. There was always this sense of needing to, to keep mo moving, keep gears turning, and never really mm -hmm. sense of play time to, to try out and be weird and experiment and, and do different things. It was always a, okay, well, I need to get this done. And then when that's done, you can get this done and everything. That the last album was very much more a, a time of, Fuck it, let's just make some cool shit and yeah, like let's play around and see, come up with new ideas and do new things and and develop new habits and play with new toys and all that. If I recall correctly, I think your pet favorite from that album was Goliath because you found a certain song, uh, not song, sound that you liked and you were trying to incorporate this overarching feel. Am I right? Sort of, uh, kind of, sort of. It, it was something where the the base element or the the core elements as far as like okay here's some background ambience okay that's neat and maybe a slight melodic element that's kind of cool and sitting there i'm like you know what this sounds like to me you know what this needs is a giant mecha robot stomping through a city that just whatever i was playing with i hit a point i'm like this is where i hear this going and I attempted to create that on my own. And I, I took some drums and made them big and distorted. And I'm like, okay, it's a big mecha sound. Um, but I told David about it and I sent him what I had. And he sent me back an actual big mecha sound stomping through a city rather than my crummy little attempt at it. Like, it, there was... <laughs> I, I don't think this was intentional on his part, but when I got it back, there was a, a sense on my end of him saying, oh, that that's cute. He, here's how you do it for real. Um, yeah. So, yeah, what what uh, what's what's in the, the finished track on the album for Goliath is basically what he sent me back. Like all of the, the more musical elements were more or less present in the demo I sent him, but all of that sort of industrial machinery monster chaos is what he added to it that was uh exactly what i was looking for so yeah that that is one that i feel good about from the perspective of idea to execution like mm. a, a lot a lot of times you can have a great idea but no idea how to execute it and sometimes you'll uh settle for okay, this isn't what I was trying to do, but I don't know how to do what I was trying to do. And maybe this gets some of the, a hint of the tones that I was trying to accomplish. Uh, not this one. This one is a, like, oh, this is exactly what you were looking for. I'm like, okay, good. Yeah. Well, speaking of, you know, giant robots rampaging through the city, um, kaijus are becoming really popular again. The Godzilla Minus One movie came out recently. Uh, would you like to revisit that same theme? Maybe uh, have a theoretical uh, EP or something like that? Not so much for Godzilla itself, but revisiting the whole rampaging destruction through the city and fine-tuning that sound into something that could work very great for ambience while capturing that same feel. Uh, I would say that isn't where my storytelling interests lie. Um, I guess I, I am more interested in the, the one individual's emotional journey, um, of, 
mostly speaking more like determination if i think something big like a like a kaiju type film or whatever either where your your view you the audience are the masses observing this act of nature take place and, and whatever emotions those capture or you're an individual having you know the act of god emotion um natural disaster of this kaiju happen to you mm -hmm. and those are intense emotional journeys but it, that isn't necessarily the na narrative arc that i lock into i i i much more lock into the 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 david approaching the goliath okay and, and um so there's excuse me there's a an idea i have for an album i would like to write that is essentially a film score for a non-existent film that is more about a an individual going down a a one-way journey to fight against something that they know they're destined to lose to mm -hmm. um or at least maybe draw like maybe if, even if they're successful they're not coming back and and that sort of emotional journey of the determination behind that that uh so I, I, I have a love for film score, and I, I want to explore that more myself. Um, but I, I like those sort of interior character exploration uh, aspects of it, rather than something big and grand, like a, maybe one day something, but that isn't what I'm drawn to as an audience member as much. Is there any composers for movies and stuff that you draw influence from, per se, uh, John Williams or Hans Zimmerman or anybody? Yes. So uh, I do enjoy a lot of Hans Zimmer and more directly a lot of Tom Holkenborg, who is uh, a protege of Hans Zimmer. And so like th they are different individuals who have their own different things, but the I don't think it's a stretch to say, hey, you listen to Junkie XL and you can hear the influence of Hans Zimmer in that. And so I take some of my film score influence from Junkie XL, which is then ten tangentially, I always screw up that word, uh, related to Hans Zimmer and all that. Um, I do like uh, Tyler Bates's um, John Wick scores. Those are those are very cool. Um, let's see what else. Oh, you, uh, my favorite scores are the scores where you can listen to them and know what the movie or show or whatever is like, either know what it's about fully. Like, oh, I know the arc of this narrative fully just from the music or at least get the tone and vibe correctly. Mm -hmm. Um, Hans Zimmer's Man of Steel score is like watching the movie in my opinion and so i i love that score because it just captures the the full emotional arc in my mind but uh the the andor score that came out for the the star wars andor show mm -hmm. like oh man the the not exposition but the the setting the the way the music communicates the setting is just so good in that like more than most anything that comes to mind, one of those songs coming on, I'm like, oh, I'm in the show again, J just by the the, the tonality and, and and everything about it. It uh, it really, I can't imagine that show being as good as it is without that score behind it. Understandable. Um, so we went over your gear. And, you know, the mecha stomping, city destruction. How would you say with you having the freedom to take self-discovery with your latest album, uh, would you have any techniques or certain soundscapes that you think your sound has evolved and you'll be implementing that to the future 
And also, what is the name of your newest album? Uh, so our, our latest album is called Shift. And um, I would say that it is a, sound-wise, it is things we have always been capable of, but maybe haven't actually done. It, it, in the sense of, if you're approaching things like, okay, I, I need a club hit or I need a verse, chorus, verse type song or, or whatever, um, you, you may stick to what you know or certain sounds that you know work, or you mm -hmm. may avoid, hey, let's, let's just explore this sound for a few minutes at a time. Um, so us taking that time to do this now on this album was... It wasn't things we couldn't do or haven't done before necessarily, but it was really a doubling down on going in those directions that were sort of off the table a bit before. Taking the time to explore all the ideas that popped in your head from the previous albums, but didn't quite have a place yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that that was a lot of fun. And... Um, You know, we, we set out to write an EP. We were thinking five tracks, seven maximum. And then mm -hmm. I, I think I think the finished thing was either 11 or 12. Um, part of that was the, the demos that we, we... We wrote a bunch of demos and then narrowed it down. And we're like, okay, we're going to focus on these, but then we're going to have to narrow it down even more. And when we got to that second time, we're like, ah, oh, no, actually, these are all kind of working. Mm -hmm. And th th there was one that at the moment, at that point when maybe we should have narrowed it down, that wasn't quite working. But we're like, ah, oh, uh, let's let's leave it in there for now. And then, you know, by the time it was done, it was like, oh, no, that's great now. Yeah, you know, we, we, we figured it out. Um, but then during those last few cycles, we, we wrote two more that were like, oh, well, by that point, we sort of mapped out something of a narrative arc, and we needed these different moments that weren't there and what we already had. So uh, the, the, the track Second Thoughts, which is the moment of humanity, the crossroads, the turning point for the, the character arc of the story. Like that, that was missing and kind of needed to be there. Mm -hmm. And then, so we're like, oh, okay, there's one more track. Okay, we wrote one more, but now, now we're done for real. And then I wrote Penance, um, which I think works as an aftermath um, or, you know, the, the consequences of, of, you know, you, you have the narrative arc of, Starting situation, what prompts action or movement, choices to be made, turning point crossroads, and then how it plays out. But then you need some place to sit in the, okay, these are the consequences of my actions I now need to live with. And and penance was that, really. And so, again, it, okay, now there's another song on the album. It's like, oh, this five-track EP turns into a 10-plus track album. Uh, but mm. we still got it done in under a year, which was uh, impressive because some of my albums have taken years at a time to 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 bring to life. Can people expect a round two for your shift? Um, so we have plans in the works for what comes next. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we will start to be a bit public with those before long uh but it will not be shift part two it, it will be it will be something else in some regards we are anticipating a return to some previous frames of reference for us um one of the things we knew going into shift was nothing about this is going to work for the club. 
nothing about this is going to work for live performance at least not the way i i, I do live shows currently so mm-hmm. it we knew going in like we're going to do this as quickly and easily as possible to just have fun for ourselves and no one else will like it and then we'll put it out and we can go back to doing something that maybe other people will like and right. It turned out better than we anticipated. Like there are people who like it, and it it was a lot of fun. And you know there was there was a lot we got, uh, you know, muscles we got to flex we don't normally get to flex, etc. But n- there is still that sense of like, okay, let's go back to some songs. Let's go back to some club tracks. Let's, um, you know, re- return to something that are more straight ahead and more keyed to playing at a live show or, or whatever, but while still holding on to whatever lessons we learned along the way and whatever new ideas and new sounds and new approaches, we, we got to, um, you know, exercise and everything. So, um, yeah, the, there, we, we do have plans, but it, it will be more, in some ways similar to our older material than this, this past album. All right. So you mentioned, I'm probably going to mispronounce this name. I, in fact, I forgot the exact name, but someone like Tristan Durst, Durant? Ru- Rudet. Rudet. Tristan Rudet. You mentioned uh, some with him on SoundCloud. So yes. it sounds like you're open to collaboration. Um, would you like to tell us more about that one or ones that you would like to be open to? Uh, well, sure. So um, I've known Tristan for a decade and a half now at this point. He's uh, in the Boston and Providence, Rhode Island area. He has had several bands over the years, but he also does videography and uh, video projection and stuff. And then goes on tour with bands and doing their, their video and everything. Uh, years ago, I... I had this great idea for a side project I wanted to do when I was just, I was moving out of writing and reason and going into Ableton and playing with more, um, not just, you know, MIDI notes to synths, but also like, Hey, let me time stretch and pitch shift and all this stuff that at the time reason didn't really do. And I was just exploring with Ableton. Uh, so I was, I had this idea of, a side project that was more of a collective effort of every song I'm going to be working with someone else and, and, and doing more of that sound morphing stuff. And there were a bunch of demos I did that will eventually make their way to the sunlight through other means somewhere, somehow. Uh, But the only track that I worked on with that project to actually come out is that track I did with him and, Given that I started writing in 2008 and it just came out earlier this year, that's um, mm. more an indicator of my work ethic than anything else. Um, but it's something I'd had kicking around for year, kicking around for years, and that he added to that I liked and wanted to put out. And finally, this year, I, I got my my shooting gear enough to to put it out, and so. Uh, not having an outlet specifically of where to release it. I just threw it on SoundCloud for now. Um, but it's called Knife to a Gunfight, which was going to be the name of the that side project. And, but now since this is the only song to come out of it, um, he, he also threw a clip from the movie The Untouchables that makes reference to a knife to a gun fight into the clip. Cause he knew that was going to be the name of the project. So like, hmm. Oh, we'll just call the song that and, and call it a day. Um, so yeah, I, I like collaborating with people. I don't know how good at it I am because you know, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know what I'm doing by myself. So I have no idea how to work with you. Cause right. I'm making it up as I go. So I I trust you know what you're doing, but I don't. So I, I feel weird working with you because I'm just screwing around. Um, 
so I, I'm I'm always open to collaborating, but it is sort of anxiety inducing because it is a sort of a mess in progress for me. Well, if you could have, let's call it a genie wish, and you were able to collaborate with anybody alive or dead, um, or from any time period, uh, who would be the artist or band that you would have loved to collaborate with? Hmm. So I've been wanting to get the singer from Gravity Kills on a track for a while now. And as they they just played their first show in like over a decade last month. So they 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 may be actually available to do stuff like that. Uh so I if I had a good track that I think would fit them, I might actually try and reach out to them and, and get him on a track. Um, I don't know. You know, I I don't know necessarily what I bring to the table that the people I look up to can't do themselves. Mm. Like, I, I would love to to remix something by by anyone, really, because here's their vision and here's my weird offshoot vision. Those two things can coexist and, and be neat and interesting and different. Whereas when you're collaborating, it's like, well, no, you, those need to converge at some point and be the singular vision. And, you know, I, I love Depeche Mode. I love Nine Inch Nails. I love KMFDM, but what am I going to bring to the table with anybody like that? So I, I don't throw those on my wish list because I'm like, they don't need me. They, 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 they can handle it without me. Um, what, what strikes my interest a bit more, I guess, from collaboration is more, more fertile ground, you know, more, where someone is a bit more up in the air, just as I'm a bit up in the air. And there's that greater possibility of, oh, where, if, if we, if we hold hands on this, where we're going to come down is somewhere different than either of us would do on our own. And th mm. that is, that is more interesting to me, I guess, if it comes to collaboration. I hear that. Um, what about venues or concert halls, stuff like that? What's your favorite go-to? And then what is one that you would like to go to in the future? Um, or hmm. even an event? So I, I've only really been to shows around the Boston area. And you know, there are some I like. Well, let me rephrase that. Um, there are shows I've been to that I enjoyed, that I saw a good show and had a good time. And so you sort of impart the quality of the show onto the venue you saw the show at, whereas maybe the, the venue isn't that great, actually. Um, but you had a good time while you were there. Um, so no venues really stand out to me as things that are good unto themselves. Uh, there, there was one that opened about a year ago here in, in Boston, the, the MGM something rather that I, I, I saw skinny puppy there on their, their final tour earlier this year that like, it was big and spacious and fancy and shiny and, and all those things. I guess it was nice as like, as Howard the acoustics, I don't know. It was loud, like, but that's, that's a skinny puppy show. What do you know? Um, and and then there's some of the more like smaller intimate venues around here, you know. It sounds like crap, but you're near the artist, or it sounds great, but you're miles away. And I I haven't really found too many venues for me that are like that. That's special for being there specifically compared to anywhere mm -hmm. else you might be. Um, but. I like playing smaller venues. Like I, I'm not a, a live performance person per se. I, I do it, but it's not where I gravitate towards. So when I do it, I like it to be a little more small and intimate and a, a greater sense that people are there just 
to hang out and chill and have a good time and maybe hear some cool music and if they're not into what I'm doing, it's not the end of the world. Whereas at a big venue, if they were there to see me, then that puts a lot of pressure on me that I, I don't really need or want. I can get that. So when you're on the road, it sounds like it doesn't take too long, but when you are going to go to play at a show, uh, what do you like to do for fun to pass the time in between sets? Um, so I, before I play, I'm very anxious. Um, I have a job to do and, you know, you, you, you do your sound check and then you have a couple hours before you play, maybe. So there's a time where I have a thing I need to do, sound check, and then a few hours with nothing, and then time where I have a thing I need to do, perform. And mm -hmm. that that in between time, I'm just an anxious wreck because I'm there's a thing I need to do, but I can't do it yet, and I can't really do anything else until that thing's done. Uh, right. So that is not a good time for me. I do not have fun. Uh, it is just waiting until it's time for me to do the thing that I came here to do, and then afterwards, then maybe I can chill and relax. Be like, okay, I did the thing, and now I can just sit down and have a drink or talk to somebody or, or, you know, whatever. Um, but, uh, I do love going up to Portland, Maine for shows. I always have a good time when I go up to Salem mass for shows. Uh, I've, I've done upstate New York and Providence, Rhode Island and, and Southern Vermont, uh, and Western mass. And, um, always happy to be welcome anywhere that wants to have me, but, I am focused on doing my job until my job is done. And only then do I just let myself just kind of chill a bit. Do you think you would be willing to go to a music event where there's hundreds of bands playing? So it's not so much pressure people coming to see you specifically, but you know, like wave Gothic Treffen in uh, Germany's one of the biggest Gothic music festivals. Um, New York used to have the Triton Festival, you know, stuff like that. Would you ever like to be a part of an event like that while playing? Uh, sh short answer is yes. Uh, I've been to, to Wave Gothic Treffen a few times. I'm hoping to go again next year just, just as an audience member. Uh, I, I went to Triton um, a decade ago or so. Um, and and there, there's many others around. Um, I don't necessarily get uh, imposter syndrome about writing music. Mm -hmm. I do get imposter syndrome about performing music. I'm if someone wants me to play a show, my response is, "I'm sorry, you must be mistaken. You realize." I'm just playing backing tracks and then noodling my synth over top. Like I'm, I'm performing, but I'm the song is going to play without me. I'm just, I'm just hitting some additional notes on top. Like, are you sure you want to pay me money to do this? You, you could, there must be better ways for you to ent entertain your crowd than me. Um, thankfully I'm a little bit over that with some of the promoters I know in Portland and Salem and such who, I've worked with enough that they know what I do. They mm -hmm. know their crowd. And if they want me to play, they, I trust them to have their, the best interests of their crowd in mind. And if they think what I do meshes with their crowd, then I'm going to trust them on that. And then I'm not, I'm not fooling anyone. Cause that everybody already knows. Um, if, if somebody knew, you know, if, if, jet from new york is like hey i'm putting on another festival want to come play i'm like are you sure you want me like i'm not gonna say no but you realize there's other bands out there that are probably <laughs> way more interesting than me uh, so yeah that that's kind of where i come down on that although if if um i do have to clarify that while well, ground to dust is two guys uh, for live shows in in New England, I, I do those solo. Uh, if if somebody was putting on a, a festival with some degree of a budget, 
uh, we would get David out here and 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 do a little bit more, go a little bit harder than than when I'm just by myself. Uh, let's see. Is there anything in particular that you'd like to plug in, um, like other people's works? Uh, you mentioned uh, Outer Darkness Records. Uh, yep. A couple other names you're throwing out. Would you like to go over those at all? Yeah. So um, I'm I'm a, a periphery member over at Outer, Outer Darkness Records, much as you are, um, and so an idea was was put together to. Uh, put together a compilation album of artists from from that uh, from that space, a, a sampler of all the different artists who uh, participate, uh, and so I'm executive producing that compilation. And so, in addition to myself, there there you know there's some dilemma, there's some pixel grinder, there's some anger, um, hexen process. Granted, I sanded up for any. Uh, I think some other things in there um, that I might be forgetting. Uh, so yeah, that that'll be early next year. That is, it's my first time executive producing something like this. So that is uh, an interesting challenge for me as as sort of a project manager. Like I in in my free time, I'm. I'm in medical data, biochem, farm, something, blah, blah, blah. I don't even know. Uh, this is an interesting crossover of, hey, here are all the skills I have from my nine to five applied to creative stuff. Uh, that That is an interesting challenge, but that I'm enjoying or, you know, tackling head on. Uh, so that'll, that'll be cool. I, I just finished my remix uh, for that this morning and um so yeah uh yeah there so hmm. uh, on my recent album we we had remixes by numinosis and arc runner yeah mm -hmm. uh, local boston bands um also around here we've got big time kill uh other great, great Boston bands and such. I'm Sawtooth, Fatigue. Uh, I'll always want to uh, promote the Boston brand uh, as much as I can. What would you say would be some influences that you draw upon? You mentioned KMFDM, Skinny Puppy, uh, a couple of others. I think you even mentioned Frontline Assembly. Uh, I'm not for sure, but what would you say are kind of like these cornerstones that have you have built upon to develop your own kind of sound? Uh, so so when I was starting out, it was absolutely Depeche Mode, KMFDM, Nine Inch Nails. Like they they were they were the people who was making music I liked. That I'm like I want to make shit that sounds like that, and you know, attempted to do so. I failed, but I attempted. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, in the early 2000s, then I discover things like BNB Nation and Frontline Assembly and Skinny Puppy and all that. Uh, and that just you know reaffirmed that I like this. I want to make music I like. Therefore, I must make music that sounds like this. Um, now... Uh, to some degree, my music writing habits are diverging from my interests a little in that whatever habits I've developed are going down one path. And as new music comes out and new artists pop up on my radar, what, what I like is always changing, but what I know how to do is sort of going down one path. Um, right now, Dissector is my favorite band with, you know, their their last several albums being awesome and inevitably influenced things. Uh, Heerhorst is a German house producer guy, um, and that is the other thing I, I love to, to listen to. But I have, you know, a, I love a lot of drum and bass, like uh, 
London Electricity and Bop and uh, other bands that are avoiding my mind at the moment. Um, Always happens when you're on the spot, right? Yeah. No, I I love house. I love Psytrance. I love drum and bass. I love ambient and minimal house and techno and stuff. Um, but you know, I grew up. I grew up on classic rock and surf rock. I grew grew up on new wave top forty. Uh, I love nineties and alternative and grunge and all that. So I want to write music that pushes all of my buttons, but it's. Mm-hmm. The more buttons you have to push, the harder it is to do like one thing that pushes all of them. So instead you have to like, okay, well, this thing will push some of these buttons and this thing will push some of these other buttons. And um, something I'm hoping to do more of, uh, as I've talked to my friend Tristan about this, is like exploring like shoegaze, but mm-hmm. non-guitar shoegaze. Like I, I really? really like... I like hypnotic bass lines. Mm-hmm. And so like in my, I'm not an aficionado, but in my opinion, like the, the guitar part of shoegaze is, Hey, let's take a really simple guitar thing and run it through a whole lot of effects. Well, you mm-hmm. can run a synth through a whole lot of effects and get the same result. So I'm curious to take the, you know, driving hypnotic repetitive bass line and, and drum beat. And instead of a guitar going off into the ether sphere, you have a synth going off into the ether sphere. And I'm I'm curious to explore that. And so we've talked about that might be what we embark on together. Um, Cause like those are cool things to me, but the other things I'm doing aren't really pushing those buttons because why mm-hmm. would they like, why would my industrial techno project push my shoegaze buttons? Uh, so why don't we, start doing that over here so we'll see how that goes maybe maybe nothing maybe this is the last you'll ever hear of it where can people uh find you on social media and uh buy your latest album shift so shift is on spotify to listen to but it's also on bandcamp and amazon and itunes and and youtube and and all those places as well as our previous albums um uh ground to dust and and antidote for annie are both on facebook uh ground to dust is on instagram i don't think antidote for annie is um similarly i'm using youtube as one singular channel for both at the moment so Mm -hmm. i i posted song breakdowns of ground to dust songs on the ground to Dust youtube but that antidote for Annie song I wrote this morning is also on the ground to dust YouTube. Um, they both have their own sound clouds, um, but I, I don't make as much use of that uh, these days. Like I, I, right. I, I throw some things on there. So there's something there, but as far as like, are you going to actually that song I wrote today, I threw on SoundCloud just so there was something to link people to. But yeah, so Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Amazon, Spotify, etc. And what handle would they need to search for? Those are pretty much all just ground to dust. Okay. Because that's me. Any... I'm Patrick from Ground to Dust. Because we didn't do intros at the beginning. You wanted to, and I said no. We'll come back to that later. So hey, yeah. hi. I'm Patrick from Ground to Dust and Antidote for Annie. And I'm uh, I'm Skull from Old School Sounds. <laughs> Do you have any uh, closing statements for the interview? Anything that we haven't been yet to talk about that you'd like to get in? Um, not that comes to mind. Um, you know, I've... If you are a creative person, opportunity is something you create or, or take advantage of. Let, let's put it that way. Um, mm-hmm. I have been writing music for a long time, and I feel I have 
found it more successful and fulfilling in just say the last year than many of the years before that. Not all, I mean, the highs and lows, obviously, but I've, I've really felt energized and engaged by it a lot more the last year than sometimes prior. But because now I'm, I'm putting in the effort, I'm putting in the work, I'm making the time, I'm seizing the opportunities, I'm creating the opportunities. And the, that's the sort of thing that you know older me would have liked to tell younger me is that, you know, sure, your your talent and your artistic nature, whatever, can can make a neat thing. And that that's cool. You made you, you made the thing. But the 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 rest of the way from doing the thing to where you maybe want it, it to go, like you 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 still have to do those parts, and uh, you can't just sit back and wait for things to fall into your lap. You you need to to make them happen, and you know don't don't wait for inspiration. You know. Uh, that was sort of a, a problem with me for some years was like, Oh, I'm not feeling it today. Okay. Well, what about tomorrow? Well, I'm not feeling it tomorrow either. And the, the times that I'm most proud of as an artist or mm -hmm. creative are the times where I'm like, okay, well, uh, I guess we need to get this done and just sit down and do it and turn it in and, and, and move on and do the next thing rather than just, wait around and hope something interesting happens. Um, so that's, that's sort of where I've been at the last few weeks, last few months, like th that outer darkness compilation thing. That was my idea. Like, I don't know how to make a compilation, but I'm doing it because I thought it would be neat and no one else was going to do it. So I guess I'll make that happen because mm -hmm. it'd be cool if it did. So that, those are lessons that a younger me would have liked to know. Uh, so I'm trying to pass that wisdom along to whomever finds value in it. That's awesome. I'm sure someone's going to enjoy that. Was there any uh, anything else on your mind? Because, of, you know, while, while we're here, we may as well get it all out, you know? <laughs> um, well, the, the other thing is, I so... I was approached recently to do a remix, which I'm going to start tomorrow. Uh, and, mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 at this point, I can't talk about because a, I don't know if I'm going to complete it. If I complete it and submit it, I don't know if it's going to get accepted and, and and all that. But the fact that someone approached me to do it was exciting, um, and I think because it's an artist I'm not familiar with prior to them approaching me. I think it was because I just for funsies, I did a remix of another artist, like an artist I am aware of and loosely friends with put out remix kits and I did a remix just for funsies. You know, I, I spent an afternoon on it a couple of weeks ago. I just put it out and be like, I'm not going to finish it, but here's what I did so far. That's neat. I'm guessing that's how this, this other offer came to me. So like, a, a, again, younger me would have, like to have had someone be like hey just do some stuff put it out there even if that doesn't go anywhere you never know who's paying attention that maybe you can create your own opportunities um so i'm just going to double down on that like do all the stuff do stuff do more stuff and after that do something else uh and and who knows where you can go from there Sounds like the key to that self discovery. You're talking about the shift album. That that granted, just... you gotta have some time for it, right? <laughs> well, yes. I admittedly, I uh, um, I have a lot of free time. Um, some of the some some of our friends in in the music creative scene uh, do not have a lot of free time, and 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 I can respect that. But some of us do, and. I used to spend that free time playing my World of Warcraft. And now I'm trying to write some music. Speaking of, since you like to 
try out new things. Have you ever, just for fun, uh, remixed or did a cover of one of your favorite World of Warcraft tracks? And if so, is it available for public viewing? Uh, no. So when I play World of Warcraft or when I play basically any game, I mute all in-game music because really? I am either watching TV at the same time or I'm listening to music music. Like there, I, one of the first things I do when I play a game is mute the in-game music. So I, it, so if, if you want me to talk about my favorite video game music, I have to go back to like Nintendo or Super Nintendo because anything PC for the last 20 years, I have not listened to. Sunset Riders, Super Mario, Street Fighter 2. Mega Man 2, all the Final Fantasies. Um, actually, mo mostly just, you know, the Final Fantasies and Mega Man 2. A little bit of Mega Man 3, but not as much. 2 is better. I hear that. Well, unless you have any uh, more closing statements, I think we're done here. I, I, I really enjoyed our time. I think we covered a lot of stuff. Yep. No, no, that's that's been good. And uh, yeah, good, good, good luck editing it all to be coherent. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right, I hit the stop button.